KDE Plasma 6.4 has just been released. So since I'm using KDE Plasma 6.3 on my magnificent Debian 13, I said to myself, why not try this new version right away to see what the developers have come up with? I initially thought about using Arch, but then I remembered KDE Neon. I hadn't tried it in ages, so I installed it. The installation, I must say, was quite smooth. Nothing special to report, but nothing exciting either. KDE Neon remains what it is. A distribution designed to showcase the latest version of KDE without too many frills. It works, period. I can say that this new version brings several improvements, but also the usual structural problems of KDE. However, compared to releases 6.2 and 6.3, I find it a coherent progression. A continuous development cycle, yes, but, forgive me, still without a clear direction. There doesn't seem to be a precise idea of where they want to go. It's as if they're navigating by sight, adding features here and there without a well-defined general plan. Now let's make this clear. If you're here for a review in the style of 99% wonderful, fantastic, beautiful, sparkling, you can safely look elsewhere. There are other channels that do this type of content. I don't. Here you won't find politically correct, let alone software correct. I say what I think, without filters. And no, I don't care about your like, your comment, or your subscription. Sorry for the frankness. I don't look at software as ideologies. Desktops are desktops. As long as they respect the principles of free software, I may like them or not. And KDE Plasma 6, I've already said, I like it. But this doesn't mean it's perfect, nor that Genome or XFCE suck. It's not black or white. Every desktop environment has its merits and flaws, and we need to be honest in recognizing them. With the premise closed, let's get to the point. One of the main novelties is the new window tiling system. Well, go ahead and watch the promotional videos because I, gentlemen, couldn't activate it. I couldn't find it anywhere in KDE settings. Does it need to be installed separately? Am I stupid? I don't know. I literally spent half an hour going through every single section of system settings. I checked window management, shortcuts, desktop effects, even Quinn's advanced settings. Nothing. I did online research. I looked at the official documentation, which, by the way, is always lacking on these practical aspects. In the end, I discovered that you need to install a separate plugin or activate something that isn't minimally intuitive. But this thing, for me, highlights once again KDE's biggest flaw. It's designed for those who already know KDE inside out. For a new user, KDE is tough, extremely tough. There are many functions, but they're poorly distributed difficult to discover, and often not clearly documented, and the user, in the end, doesn't even know they exist. The so-called discoverability is terrible. It's incredible how a desktop environment so powerful makes it so difficult to find its own features. The fact that you can't find the new tiling system is emblematic. If a function advertised as a main novelty isn't easily accessible, there's an interface design problem. For God's sake, put in the description of the introduced novelties how you can activate them. I can't lose 25 minutes just to find a new feature of the desktop environment. What world do you live in? Nerds are a small fraction of humanity. When Apple developers created the iPhone, they gave prototypes to their six-year-old children to see if they could use them. Now, you, with your underwear not washed for three months, will think, eh, yes, because iOS is for stupid people. No, it's not like that. It's designed to be human, to be used. It's not about simplifying for stupid people, but about making complex features accessible. KDE has this chronic tendency to hide gems behind arcane menus or scattered settings. I'm not asking to totally change KDE's philosophy and transform it into GNOME. No, I'm not asking this. I'm simply asking to have easy access to the myriad of excellent and infinite functions that KDE offers. Is it such an unnatural request? Am I so out of your world if I do it? This, in my opinion, is a huge limitation. KDE has extraordinary power, but its interface, today as yesterday, is still too much for initiates. It's like having a Ferrari with all the controls written in Sanskrit. The power is there, but good luck using it. With the controversy closed, I noticed while browsing through desktop effects that the cube has returned. Yes, because in KDE 6.3, the cube was no longer present. I like it. I find it intelligent as a way to show desktops. I find it pleasant, and I would like to have enhanced configurations to manage it better. 
like when moving a window from one desktop to another, the cube would activate as an effect. But these are details. But this coming and going of features is emblematic of the problem I was talking about before. The cube was there, then it disappeared, now it's back. But why? What was the logic? I don't understand. It's as if each release were an experiment in itself, without well-defined design continuity. The details of the revised Dark Breeze theme I find very balanced and pleasant. My compliments to whoever implemented it. They did a really good job here. The contrasts are right, it doesn't strain the eyes, and it maintains that visual cleanliness that makes KDE pleasant to use for hours. It's one of those improvements that don't make noise, but significantly improve the daily experience. There are also various novelties on the Do Not Disturb function that automatically activates when we put an application in full screen. A small usability improvement. This is one of those functions that should be obvious but are often missing. Finally, when I watch a movie or give a presentation, I don't find myself with notifications disturbing me. It only took them 20 years to implement it, but better late than never. Plus, the media player widget and discs and devices have received refinements. The first now allows very powerful and beautiful playback speed and pause control, and the second allows correcting possible disc errors if possible, also useful. A small detail that I find really well-crafted and intelligent. Now when we install a new application, it has a badge in the menu that highlights it. It seems trivial, but how many times have you installed something and then not remembered where it ended up in the menu? This solves the problem elegantly. They modified Spectacle's interface and interaction completely. I'm still undecided here. The old Spectacle interface was spartan but functional. This new one is more modern, richer in options, but also more cumbersome. When you need to take a quick screenshot, the last thing you want is an interface that takes up your entire screen. However, on the other hand, the new integrated editing features are convenient. We'll see with daily use if I get used to it or continue to miss the old version. Crunner shows colors. Well, maybe this function will be useful to developers who, by typing the specific code, will find themselves with the color displayed. For me, it's completely useless. But I understand that for those who work with code or design, it can be convenient. You write hash 2 ff 5733 and the corresponding color appears. It's not a bad idea. Even if for someone like me who doesn't do development, it's effectively useless. But this is another example of how KDE adds specific features targeted at niche users without necessarily improving the experience for everyone. I'm not saying it's wrong, but maybe it would be better to focus first on basic problems and then add these details. Obviously, KDE tries to please everyone because, unlike GNOME, it listens to users, and that's good. So dear KDE friends, I beg you, listen to this review. You need to make decisions and close the circle. In the end, you can't be everything to everyone and please everyone. In system settings, there's a new revision of functions related to display and color management, extended dynamic range support, P0110 format, color depth limitation, etc. This will be useful for many people. Staying on the theme of hardware management and its resources, there's also a new system monitor, efficiently enhanced I'd add, with GPU graphics per process. Intel AMD GPU usage, background system processes section, and other details. Here I must say that the work done is remarkable. Color management was one of Linux's historical gaps, and seeing KDE take these features seriously pleases me. For creatives who work with calibrated monitors or for those who have HDR displays, these are fundamental features that finally arrive natively. The new system monitor is then a breath of fresh air. Finally, I can see in real time what's happening to my GPU, which processes are using it, and have granular control over system processes. It's one of those tools you don't know how much you missed until you have it. Lastly, an aesthetic detail. The new wallpaper, which I find beautiful, adapts automatically to the chosen theme, switching from light to dark motifs automatically. This function has been present in Genome for some time. But whoever designs KDE wallpapers is, in my opinion, a genius. I love them all. They are all very beautiful. Seriously, KDE wallpapers have always been of a superior level. They have this perfect balance between elegance and originality that you don't find elsewhere. Ah, now we return to what I think overall of this release. It seems to me a clear improvement. 
And while from an aesthetic point of view, the refinement of the theme, the small goodies on notifications, and the badge in K-Runner are all excellent enhancements. When it comes to the new system monitor, I'm left bewildered regarding desktop effects and the impossible to find tiling feature. In short, in one version, the desktop cube is there. In another, it disappears, then reappears again. They give me the feeling that they're still experimenting, trying to find the right way to provide a precise structure to the desktop environment around which everything else can then be built. System settings has been revised again. Other functions have been added, others rearranged, but the fact remains that it's a pachyderm that is chaotic. KDE contributes to this chaos by moving functions from one release to another, and this is a big problem. A clear vision is missing. And here I touch the sore point. KDE suffers from a lack of long-term vision. Each release seems like an experiment, with features added, removed, moved, and modified without apparent logic. The result is a desktop environment that is very powerful, but also tremendously inconsistent. The average user, the one who doesn't spend days tinkering with configurations, finds themselves disoriented. They learn to use a function in one place, and in the next release, they find it somewhere else entirely. Or worse, they don't find it at all because it was removed temporarily. Having said this, I find the desktop exceptional. I use it as my main system in version 6.3, and I'm satisfied. We all know KDE's merits, and no one can object to them but I believe that here everyone is inclined toward that hypocritical praise that smells of ignorant propaganda, when instead it's also useful to say what's wrong, at least according to my opinion. KDE Plasma 6.4 is an exceptional desktop environment that could be extraordinary if only the developers had a clearer vision of where they want to go. It has incredible power, a flexibility that no other DE can offer, and attention to detail that in some aspects is phenomenal. But it's also frustrating to use for those who aren't willing to invest hours to discover how to do the simplest things. It's a desktop for enthusiasts made by enthusiasts, and this is both its strength and its weakness. I'll continue to use it because, despite everything, it remains the most complete and customizable desktop environment there is. But I hope that sooner or later, the developers understand that power without accessibility is just wasted power. The direction is right, but more coherence and less experimentation for its own sake are needed. KDE has everything to become the perfect desktop environment, but it must stop complicating life for itself. Thanks for watching.